There's been a lot of talk lately. Seismologists now believe that there is a soon coming earthquake in the Cascadia subduction zone off the west coast of the United States and that it's going to translate into a massive tsunami. Seismologists do believe that this will result in the worst natural disaster in the history of the North American continent because the potential devastation goes beyond description. Quoting from an article written by Katherine Schultz for The New Yorker, most people in the USA know just one fault line by name, the San Andreas, which is rumored to be on the verge of unleashing the big one. But the article goes on to point out that far worse than fault lines like the San Andreas, only subduction zones like the Cascadia have in the past produced earthquakes registering nine or more on the Richter scale. Seismologists believe that the coming Cascadia earthquake has the potential to be 20 times greater than anything the San Andreas could unleash. A subduction zone is a region where one planetary tectonic plate is colliding with another and where one is sliding underneath, subducting. But right now, the two tectonic plates colliding just a few miles off the U.S. West Coast are wedged against each other. They are stuck and the pressure is building. When one of the two plates finally gives way and subducts, it could release energy millions of times greater than the Hiroshima atomic bomb. To give an example, the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami that killed 230,000 people was caused by a mega earthquake in a subduction zone, just like the Cascadia, with colliding tectonic plates. Considered one of the worst natural disasters in world history, that quake and the resulting tsunami that occurred the day after Christmas in 2004 released a total amount of energy many million times that of the Hiroshima atomic bomb. It was a magnitude 9.3 earthquake, and a mega thrust quake of such magnitude always occurs in subduction zones like the Cascadia. Later in this video, I want to give you some more facts from seismologists about the coming West Coast Cascadia earthquake and tsunami. But first, let's go to the Bible and see what God's Word has to say about these powerful earthquakes. Of course, a politically correct secular world says that earthquakes will just happen, as determined by time and geological forces. But wiser generations in the past called them acts of God, and the Bible makes it clear that they are very special acts of God. The three central events in human history are all marked by earthquakes. The atoning death of Jesus on the cross, the resurrection of Jesus from the tomb, and the second coming of King Jesus as he returns to earth. Obviously, God speaks powerfully in the earthquake. He is connecting with a lost world that needs his salvation, a world that needs Jesus. With Jesus' death, and resurrection and second coming, God shakes the earth and says to a lost world, Behold, this is my Son. Yes, the Word of God is clear that it is God who shakes the earth. God shook the earth when He spoke at Mount Sinai. He shook the earth as He fought Israel's battles. He shook the earth in rescuing Paul and Silas from prison. And in the earthquake, God testifies to the world, listen to my message. Prophecies of the Bible tell us God will send a great earthquake in the latter days when nations gather against Israel. He will shake the earth when his two witnesses are taken up into heaven. Earthquakes are instruments of God to shake up the hearts of lost souls. The Bible says that in the last days the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. Jesus tells us to expect these many earthquakes as the end of all things nears, and as all the Bible prophecies come to be fulfilled. 
and at the very end, as the nations gather at Armageddon, an earthquake will strike like no other before it, a great earthquake such as was not known since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake. As of this time in history, the most powerful earthquake known to modern man was a magnitude 9.5, a subduction zone earthquake off the coast of South America in 1960. This map gives an idea of the massive tsunami that quake sent across the Pacific Ocean. To understand the power of this disaster that left 2 million people homeless in Chile, look at how far away Hawaii is from the epicenter, over 6,000 miles, and yet the city of Hilo, Hawaii was decimated by the tsunami. Waves so powerful that they bent parking meters in the streets. Second to this, the next most formidable earthquake known to seismologists was the Alaska quake of 1964, a magnitude 9.4, a subduction zone earthquake that created a tsunami with waves recorded as high as 220 feet, the height of a 20-story building. And third was the 2004 Indian Ocean quake we've already mentioned another subduction zone quake, magnitude 9.3, with its tsunami that killed 230,000 people. And the fourth most powerful earthquake known to man, the 2011 Japan quake, yet another subduction zone earthquake, a magnitude 9.0, with a tsunami that traveled six miles inland and moved the main island of Japan eight feet and shifted the entire earth on its axis by several inches. When Jesus' disciples asked him about the end of time and the fulfillment of all things, included in his response Jesus had said to his disciples, There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. One of the signs of the end times, the sea and the waves roaring, the prophet Isaiah wrote, The Lord spoke to me, saying, These people refuse the waters of Shiloh that go softly. The people of Israel had rejected the peaceful waters at home. In other words, they had rejected the Lord God. Now therefore, behold, the Lord brings upon them the waters of the river. The Lord uses the example of rushing water, a violent flood, to describe the consequences of rejecting His peace, His kingdom. The world today in these end times has rejected the living water, the Lord Jesus Christ, the peaceful water. And the world chooses instead the spirit of Antichrist, falling away from God's word, choosing instead to join with the nations that rage against the Lord and His Anointed One. Woe to the multitude of many people, making noise like the noise of the seas, and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations that rage against God are compared to the raging ocean waters and to the raging waves that rise and fall. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them. God rebuked those that opposed him when he rescued his children from slavery and sent the crashing waves of the Red Sea down upon a nation that fought against him. The devastating tsunamis of recent years have been caused by the world's most powerful earthquakes which occur in the Ring of Fire the ring that runs from New Zealand up the east coast of Asia, across to Alaska, and down the west coast of the North and South American continents. The ring of fire geologists have discovered is really a ring of subduction zones where tectonic plates get stuck and then abruptly get unstuck. Seismologists consider the Cascadia subduction zone to be the North American continent's most dangerous fault line. The Seattle Emergency Management Office estimates 
thousands upon thousands of landslides throughout the Pacific Northwest will be set off by the Cascadia earthquake. FEMA is projecting thousands of people will perish in a coming Cascadia earthquake and tsunami. They project a million homeless without shelter and millions more in need of food and water. There is only one way to be saved from the rushing waters of a tsunami. You won't outrun the waves as they come crashing in. The one way to be saved is to be on higher ground. God's holy word says that disaster is coming on a world that is in rebellion against God. You cannot run away from reality and you cannot run away from the coming wrath of God. God is holding back his judgment on a sin-filled world to give whosoever will the opportunity to get on higher ground now. The word of God says that Jesus delivers us from the wrath to come. Jesus is the only higher ground that can save you from the coming wrath of God. As God in the flesh, God incarnate, he died on the cross as an atoning sacrifice. In other words, because we are all sinners and deserve eternal hell, the Son of God, Jesus, took our punishment upon himself. But he arose bodily from the grave and has ascended to the Father. And now salvation is given to all who put their faith in him and worship him. This is the free gift of God. No good works, no self-effort can save us. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away our sins in the eyes of God. The Bible says the world is in rebellion toward God, but the Bible says the Lord Jesus Christ will return to earth from heaven and he will make war on a rebellious world that is at war with God. All people who reject Jesus Christ will be punished in eternal hell, but all who receive him are forgiven of sins through his precious blood that was poured out on the cross, and he will welcome his people into his eternal kingdom. You can be sure that you will enter into the kingdom of heaven when you leave this world. You can be absolutely sure of that if you will bow down your heart to God Give your heart to Jesus Christ and trust in him. Turn from sin. Say to sin, I don't want to live for you anymore. I want to live for God. I want to live for Jesus Christ. You do that today and God promises you heaven will be your home forever and ever. God promises you that. Will you do that today? Will you make that decision right now? Will you say to God, Oh Lord, I love you and I don't love this world. I love you and I don't love sin. I believe your word. I believe the Bible. I believe in Jesus Christ who came into the world for my sins. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins and I give my heart to you now, Lord. I pray to you now, please forgive my sins. Write my name into your book of life. I want to be yours now and forever. In Jesus' name, I pray that prayer. If you have prayed that prayer from your heart sincerely, God promises you that all who come to him, he will never cast out.